Right, well, I got myself a little ATU for playing around uh, doing some stuff portable. I'll just, uh, and uh, I believe that lots and lots of people on here like unboxing videos. So I thought I'd unbox it on camera. <sighs> I wanted something that would be <laughs> one car goes past the house all day and it's just gone past. Sorry about that. Right now I wanted something that would work with the FT857 which um, I did a video about a little while ago. I think I'll do another one because it was too long. Even I fall asleep watching it. Now I thought I'd take the 857 out portable, and I might use it in the car occasionally. So I wanted a little tuner that would be nice and portable, and would be suitable just for giving a, you know the coax coax run in a car two or three meters, a bit of a tweak, um, and uh, for using out portable where the antenna would be connected directly to the tuner. So I went for the MFJ 945E. See what's in the box. This is like Christmas, isn't it? My goodness. In fact, it's not far off Christmas. As you can probably tell, uh, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere as we're close to Christmas and there's blazing sunshine and 30 degrees centigrade. Today, okay, we have some padding. It's quite nicely protected in the box. We have a receipt which is also presumably a warranty. And then we have the inner box. It's very nicely packaged actually. It's a very good, good quality box that. It's nice, um, nice strong cardboard. I think I'll keep that and use that myself for storing something. Okie dokie. So, here we go. As I say, it's an MFJ, it's from America, and I've heard some very unflattering descriptions of what that acronym stands for. But uh, I thought, well, I'll give them a go. So there's the little tuner. Quite a nice looking, looking uh, unit. We we'll have a book of instructions. Now to tune it, and oh, they've also sent me a they've sent me an MFJ um, 2013 ham catalogue, 41 years, 1972 to uh, 2013. It's now the end of 2014, but um, you know they haven't charged me for it, and it will give me an idea of the products that MFJ make. Uh, so if I saw something in here, I'd just call and get the 2014 price. So that's useful thank you very much right now to the device itself there we go saying here's one I prepared earlier but no, I didn't. That's straight out of the box, that's the first time it's been unwrapped, this is the first time I've actually held it in my hand and I have to say it's about the size I expected. Um, it's nice and light, I'd be surprised if it can take 300 watts which is what it's rated at being this size but um, they do say that you know if you buy, if you, if you buy an MFJ tuner and it halved the power rating so, you know, if you get a, a 500 watt tuner, you can probably book 250 watts through it. This supposedly is a 300 watt tuner. Um, I'm only interested in putting 100 watts through it. Um, so if you halve 300 watts, 150 watts gives me 50 watts of headroom. So there shouldn't be any problem. Okay, so on the front, um, you've got the, uh, the little cross needles there showing you the forward and reflected power where they cross. Uh, you look at the red line, that shows you what the DSWR is, be it you know, 1, 1.5, whatever. 
or worse. A um, couple of uh, couple of capacitors here uh, with, uh, with little scales on, so you can once you've tuned it for different bands, you can just make a note of where these are set and where the inductor is set. Um, and there's some buttons on there where you can actually press a button there and just bypass it, just not bother with the tuner at all. Uh, high and low setting, and uh, you can turn the lamp on and off. But if you want to do that, you're going to have to put 12 volts in there to uh, to light the lamp up. Um, and on the back, you've only got the in and the out SO239 sockets. Uh, hope I wasn't leaning too far forward actually, because it's a bit awkward setting this camera up. You've got the little butterfly up there for um, uh, putting your earth wire on. There's no ballon in this one, and there's no um, post for putting a wire antenna onto, but if I use a wire antenna, it's got a banana plug on it, I'll just plug it in. And a banana plug fits quite snugly into an SO239 socket there. That's, that's not a problem at all. Um, actually, it'd be that one. <laughs> because that one there, of course, will go to the radio. Now, um, it'd be interesting to see. So that's, uh, that's what it looks like at the back. That's what it looks like at the front. Now maybe I should get behind the camera and just zoom in on that a little bit, but um, I'll think, think about maybe doing that in a minute. Let's see what the instructions say. Read all instructions before operating equipment. Always a good idea. General information, yeah, 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 yeah. See, that wasn't so painful, was it? Now we get to using it. The inductor switch represents... Okay, so maximum inductance is at position A. Minimum inductance at position L. Less inductance is needed at higher frequencies than low frequencies. Uh, the transmitter and antenna controls both represent maximum capacitance at, pos maximum capacitance at position 10. So they're the other way around. So, so you've got L is the minimum inductance, yet 10 is the maximum capacitance. <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a bit disappointing. It would have been nice if, you know, 10 had been the maximum capacitance and L had been the maximum inductance. Now to tune these, um, there's, uh, I've heard different ways that you're supposed to operate a manual antenna tuner. Some people say you have the capacitor set half like that. Then you adjust the inductance for the minimum SWR. Then you adjust the two capacitors. Then you read, or I read, that the most efficient power transfer through a T-match, which is what this is, and um, if you don't know what a T-match is, it's basically... Uh, the RF comes in on one side. So the RF, the RF comes in on one side, like that. That will go to your, that will go to your transmitter. Goes through a capacitor, which is variable like that. Goes to another capacitor, which is variable like that, which then goes to the output socket. And in the middle there you have an inductor and uh, a switch which uh, switches you know different to different amounts on the to different amounts on the coil like that so this is a T match you've got two capacitors and an inductor and um, apparently for maximum efficiency you need maximum capacitance value here, minimum inductance there. Now that suggests to me that when you're tuning this, you shouldn't actually start with the tuning controls in a central position like that. You should start with them fully meshed. But let's just see what the instructions say. We shall read the instructions. Okay. Set the transmitter and antenna controls to position 5. And they, they came out of the box with them set to 5, I didn't do that. The tuning capacitors are half opened at this setting. Rotate the inductor until the maximum noise is obtained with the transceiver in the receiving mode. Never transmit while changing the inductor setting. And that's very, you've got to remember to do that. 
I know a lot of people, they'll just put RF into it and they'll go click, 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 and it'll burn out the, the rotary switch. So don't do that. When you change the, when you change the inductor position, um, it's different on a roller inductor, of course, but um, on a switchable thing like this, you do need to uh, release the PTT. Stop you know, the transmit energy going into the thing when you, when you actually change that. Um, uh, when transmitting a steady state carrier, alternately adjust the antenna and transmitter controls for minimum SWR. Yeah, okay. Well, that, um, so they're saying that you set it to halfway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little experiment. And um, I made a little box. I made a little box yesterday that will um, allow me to look at the amplitude to, to, to be able to present different load impedances to, to this tuner and it will also let me look at the amplitude of the signals uh, of the energy put into that load. So I'm going to try tuning it at a given frequency with the capacitors in this position and I'm also going to try with the capacitors in um, the fully meshed position and we'll see how much energy we get for the uh, for the two different settings and just see you know how different it is whether it's actually which is the which is the best method i've always done it the way they describe i've had a ham radio license since 1981 it's now 2014 um, and i've always had the capacitors halfway you know 50 percent as they as they say you open the capacitors so they're half meshed adjust the roller inductor uh, this one doesn't have a roller inductor as i said but you adjust the inductance and then you adjust the capacitors for the best match. So, I fished out, uh, if I can do this, can I do this this way round? I haven't put a great deal of thought into this preparation. I know you'll find that hard to believe, but it's true. Um, hmm, how can I do this? I've got a, I've got a scope here. Now, I bought this scope. I bought this scope oh, back in the 80s <laughs> when I had, my own, uh, I had my own business in the UK that was do, dealing with uh, electronics and that sort of thing. Oh, okay, so that one's got a broken clip. <laughs> yeah, okay. I haven't got a probe with a, I haven't got a probe with a bloody clip on it. Got, it's got a ground clip on it, but it hasn't got the other clip. But um, anyway, well, let's. Um, let's fire him up anyway. Okay, so that's a little bit bright. Um, trace could do with a bit of. Oh, look at that! Yeah, this needs a bit of a. This probably uh, uh, this probably hasn't been switched on for twenty years. This thing. Okay, now yesterday I made this. Um, I made this simple little uh, test rig up here. And what this does is, this is uh, this just allows me, it's got a little inductive coupling in there. This has got a little inductive coupling with a BNC connector. Um, so it's not directly connected to the RF going through it. Um, originally this came from a commercial repeater station years ago when it used, uh, this went off to a little turnaround mixer for testing the uh, repeater. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use that point there to sniff off some RF and just look at the amplitude. This little box here, all this is, is it's got a pot in it. I've actually set it to 200 ohms. But this will allow me to just, just change the load impedance and see how well it tunes and to see what sort of amplitude we get with the different, uh, with the different tuning methods. Righto, so, 
that goes into the antenna port. Like that. Somewhat reluctantly, but there we go. I was beginning to think that might have a funny thread on it for a second there, but that's fine. Okay, right. So, now what, uh, what else we can do? I just need to just quickly check that you can see that. Uh, yeah, that seems sort of... Uh, sort of okay mm, okay maybe just move this over a little bit sorry about this this is pretty amateurish stuff but it's amateur radio after all so what can we what can we expect really i suppose now yeah, i could drive some rf into this i was going to drive some rf into it with a with a little um Antenna analyzer, here we go. A little antenna analyzer there. And just see how it looks on 40 meters. Now, <laughs> see what I mean about preparation? I haven't got the BNC to SO239 lead. That might be a second. an in connector but uh, okay I'm going to pause this okay so uh, anyway I'll uh, continue with this on another video otherwise it's going to take me a little while to sort the um, sort the uh, sort the leads out sorry about that Probably the YouTube thing to do is to say um, continued on uh, part two. <laughs> 